Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Presto 2. In this video, we're going to get into some of the basic operations of this machine. Now to start out with, we have the keypad and there's a lot of information that you have and a lot of settings that you can do on your keypad, so I'll, I'll go ahead and explain. Now this is just informational screen. The touchpad part is down here. The informational screen tells you right here what foot to use for your selected stitch and here's the number that shows what stitch you've selected. This shows you what mode you're in. Now you're in mode the direct select stitches. If you went down here, this is your utility stitches, which includes these direct select stitches. Here you have your decorative stitches, and that's these up here, and your lettering stitches right there. Now for lettering, I'm gonna get into stitch combinations and lettering in a different video. Just know that it is possible to do lettering on this. Okay, so right here, these little hearts mean that you can do a full line of stitching. So if I chose like a, um, oh, a line of stars, 22, there we go. I can do a whole line of stars or using this button here, I can just do a single star. So that's what that has to do with. So let's go back into regular sewing, okay? And then these up here indicate that when you stop with, the first one is, needle down, when you stop sewing, your needle will be down in your fabric. You can adjust that by having, pushing this button, and then when you stop, the needle will be in the up position. So it depends on um, if you find that more convenient for like if you do a lot of pivoting, maybe you wanna stop with needle down. You can, of course, always put the needle down or up using this key here, but this does it automatically for you. This is needle position. Now, right now, we have it in the left needle position, which is gonna give you your nice 5 8 inch seam allowance. You can have your machine set so that it will default into the right needle position, and I'll show you what that means right now. First of all, stop, you know, turn off your machine, you turn it back on, now the needle is in the center position. Also, we're in stitch number three which is this stitch right here. If you look really carefully, you can see that is the same stitch as this, only it's in the center needle position. I'm gonna go back to the left needle position and I don't need to turn it off to, uh, to reset that. Okay, so for your 5 8 inch seam allowance, which for garment sewing, that's the kind of the standard that you want to do. You have markings on your needle plate. There's one right here in the plastic area and then one back here that says 5 8 inch. So you would run the edge of your fabric right along those lines right there. That will give you a 5 8 inch seam allowance. One thing, there is a tool that you can get that helps make this a little bit easier. This is called the seam guide. It's meant to fit this machine. And you'd put that on right here where this little screw is and put that right up to your seam. And that makes it so that as you stitch along, you run the edge of your fabric right along that piece of metal there and give you your nice 5 8 inch seam allowance. You can also set it to make a three quarter or uh, a different seam allowance width. But this is a nice little tool to have just to make it a little bit easier. Again, you don't have to have it. It's certainly possible to use the lines that are already on the uh, needle plate. Okay, so let's go on here. Now, here we have the needle position for your um, uh, straight stitch needle position. If you had a zigzag, we'd say how wide your zigzag is right here. And you can adjust that width with these buttons here. You can also make your stitch shorter over here, shorter or longer. Now, notice those little um, ovals disappeared. The ovals indicated that's the default. So to get that back into default for that zigzag, I just reselect the stitch. Okay, but let's get back into regular stitching. And then underneath here, look carefully, it says position and total. That's talking about if you're doing a combination of stitches or some lettering, it tells you where in the uh, 
uh, letter or the, the word you are in, in the combination of stitches. And you can use these buttons to check that to make sure you have the correct uh, spelling of the word, etc. And then total, it will say how many stitches when you uh, do a combination of stitches. Again, I've got another video that we're gonna do that uh, we'll get more into stitch combinations and um, lettering. Just know that that's what you would use those for. Okay, over here we have this, as I said before, this is the mode key. Now if you press this a second time, whatever is in memory, you can recall that and start sewing it. Right now I just have the straight stitch uh, in memory because I was overwriting what was over in there. There's only one memory spot, so if you want to erase what's in there, just select straight stitch and put it into memory, this little key right down here. Okay. So you can just toggle back and forth between those two. Now this one here, these stitches, as I said before, all of those are included in this. When you're in direct select, you just have one button push to get to a particular stitch. When you are in the utility stitches, you have two buttons to get to that stitch but it gives you a lot more stitches that you can do. You've got buttonholes here, you've got quilt piecing um, stitches, you've got quilting, which is like for uh, applique or, uh, uh, yeah, applique stitches. And then this S stitches here, that has to do with uh, an accessory that you can get that trims off the edge of your fabric. It's called a side cutter. So that's what the S has to do with. So if you want to seam and overcast in one step and have that edge trimmed off as you go, you use this side cutter attachment that you would put on your machine. Okay, then down here we have your decorative stitches and you have lettering right here. Now, the C and the OK have to do with your lettering. Like if I was gonna spell something out, I would need to push OK after each one. That way I would get the sequence of whatever I'm doing. And you can also do a combination of letters and symbols if that's what you want to do. Um, it's a, a cute way to embellish things. Okay, I'm gonna go back to regular stitching, and of course this is your memory key here. Now, up here, this is, a, these two are really handy to have. So for now, I'm gonna just turn those off just to show you. If I started sewing, straight seam, that's what we're in. To seal the end of the seam at the beginning, at the end, I would push my back stitch button. But if I turn this on, now it stitches a little bit in the beginning and at the end. Let me show you. Okay, so we're gonna go 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna just start kind of towards the end of the fabric. And I like to hang on to my thread when I first start sewing. That way it doesn't get kind of incorporated into the seam. First couple stitches. Okay. Let's go a little bit more, there we go. See how it did the back stitch by itself without me pushing the back stitch button. Now I'm gonna go down about to here, about to the end where I want it to be. Now, I took my foot off the pedal. I'm gonna push this button, watch what happens. It does the back stitch by itself, comes forward right to where I stopped. And then I can cut my thread or I could just take my fabric out of there and use the side cutter like that or use my scissors. If I turn this button on, as soon as I do that back stitch button, it will cut the thread. So I'll just give you a little example of that. So we have both of these on now, as it shows right up here. I'm gonna just sew up to that point. Now, one button push. I don't have my foot on the pedal. Machine's doing everything there. Did you hear that? Cut the thread. And there we go. It leaves these little thread tails in the back, which you can trim them off or just leave them as you choose. And then, of course, you would uh, cut off your beginning thread at the beginning. Now, on the previous stitch that I did, I had already used the thread cutter on the previous stitch, and there was no thread 
when I first started out again, there was no thread on the back to cut. So that really is a time saver too. You just cut threads here, cut threads here, and you're done if you even want to trim the, the uh, threads. Okay, that's what these two do. Now the cutter, the automatic cutter only works when you're doing this, um, where it uh, prioritizes doing the, the tie off at the beginning and at the end. If you turn this off, if you turn that off, it turns off the, the automatic cutter. You can still use this button here, but again, it saves you a button push. It just makes it uh, a little bit smoother, a little bit like if that's, you're always pushing these buttons, you may as well just program it in right over here on your keypad. Okay, now this one here is a really fun one to do. I'm gonna show you that. If we're gonna do zigzag right here, and I'm gonna shorten that a little bit here. Now, this, if I turn that on, that makes it so that instead of this being your maximum speed that you can go, you can use this, you can hear that? That will make it do a wider and narrower zigzag. I'll show you what that looks like. In fact, I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. See how I'm moving it from one side to another? And you can make it nice and smooth. So I'm gonna just uh, cut that off there. Isn't that neat? That's with this button right here. So to take it back out of there, we just press that and that little icon disappears. Okay, there's one more button to show you and that is the twin needle button. Now, your machine comes in the accessories. It has a twin needle, but I will show you what that twin, a twin needle looks like. That's what this is here. It has a single shank and then on either side of that it has two needles and you'd put that in there. And when you thread it, you'd have to thread it by hand because you couldn't use the needle threader with this. Uh, but this is gonna give you some beautiful effects like this. Now the purpose of having your twin needle button selected is gonna keep you from doing too wide of a zigzag or too wide of a decorative stitch. And that protects your uh, the foot and the needle plate. That's the purpose of that. Also, there are some stitches like your lettering, they're not gonna let you do that. So take that out of there like that. Now that brings up a point. You saw it says E09. There is a place in your book, in your reference guide, that talks about, and it's re really right towards the end here, what these various messages mean. It could mean that you're trying to sew with your start-stop button and your foot control's connect connected. You just need to disconnect that and then you can use your start-stop button. So this is just a handy reference. It's right before the, um, the index in the back to tell you what these things mean. Okay, so that's basic operations on your Baby Lock Presto 2. I hope you found this helpful. If you have, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here at Montevilla, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, bye.